Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's time for another monthly roundup for July. It's been quite a busy month, really, all in all. Um, I've had three free events that I've been to. Um, I've been to two theatre shows and had a nice meal at a restaurant as well. So thank you to everyone involved with those. All opinions are going to be my own regardless. And then I've also been out for some nice walks and enjoyed some entertainment at home as well. So there's plenty to mention, as per usual. Um, the only not nice thing that's happened really is the fact I've had my PIP telephone assessment. I mean, it might have a nice result to it, but it's not very pleasant to go through. But, you know, every so often they like to double check that you've not suddenly become non-disabled or to see if they can find a reason to take money off you. Um, so, yeah, I had to go through that process. Um, the lady on the phone was perfectly nice and she seemed to understand what I was saying. And, you know, I was allowed to kind of um, get points in that I wanted to if I kind of just said I wanted to say something else then she was happy to listen um but it was a long phone call lasted two and a half hours luckily i was able to record it um they gave me permission to so hopefully they weren't trying to accuse me of saying things that i didn't or whatever so we'll see what happens it could be two or three months before i know the result of it you know, i should get the benefit in theory but anything is possible so just have to wait and see really i'll keep you posted um but yeah apart from that um everything's been fine for me Obviously, I know that things have been very difficult elsewhere in the country. My heart goes out to all the people of Southport in particular um, for the attacks that took place there. Um, not only the fact that children were killed in that senseless act, but also the violence that followed as well with far right people coming in and just destroying things. Because that's what you do, isn't it? When people are murdered and you want to support a community, you go in and smash it up. I and mean, it's just it's stupid, isn't it? But there you are, that's the kind of world we live in in some ways and um, social media's got a lot to answer for for that, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, but yeah, my heart goes out to everyone affected by all that stuff. It's uh, not very nice, I know. Um, but yeah, um, as for me, as I say, things are going pretty well, so I'm just going to crack on with the things that I've been getting on with and I hope you enjoy going through it all with me as always. So let's get on with it. So I'll start with theatre, and the first show I'll mention is The Constituent at the Old Vic. And this is quite a short show, relatively speaking, one and a half hours without an interval. But it's very interesting. It's a drama, a bit of a psychological thriller, really. And it stars James Corden, which is quite unusual in the sense that we normally know him for comedy. You know, I'm not into Gavin and Stacey particularly, but I did enjoy a lot of his clips from The Late Late Show during lockdown. I kind of discovered them on YouTube and watched his monologues and other bits from that show quite regularly. So, yeah, I know him for comedy, but this sees him in a very different light. You know, it starts off quite light-hearted where he's kind of installing security in his local MP's office and you know like banter between them and stuff but then as he starts talking to her properly and the MP is played by Anna Maxwell Martin it becomes apparent that he has quite serious issues going on in his life you know he's a father who is becoming divorced from his wife so he wants access to his children that kind of thing so he gets increasingly angry about that and you know it's almost to a point where it puts Monica the MP in danger almost sort of fearful for her safety in the eyes of the police officer who looks after her called Mella, played by Zachary Hart. So he gets more and more involved as well as things progress, as James Corden's character Alec gets more angry and intense as the uh, story progresses because he wants Monica to kind of help him out and she can't get too involved because of her position. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, there's some nice twists on the way and stuff and the three of them act very well together. So it's a very compelling drama and it's nice to see James Corden doing a very different role, which he pulls off really, really well. So it's well worth a look. Although I say that, it's finishing in early August anyway but if it ever comes back round you know on a tour or something or comes back to the old Vic or whatever it's well worth looking into it's a great show and then the other show I saw was Hades Town, which is a big musical all about a couple of Greek myths that have kind of been mashed together to create one story. At its heart, it's about a guy called Orpheus who is deeply in love with Eurydice and he wins her over through his charm and his talent for songwriting. But they live in poverty and Eurydice is kind of tempted down to the underworld with a promise of protection and stuff by the fates. Even though there's kind of hard labour down there that she'd have to be involved with, um, she's tempted down there. King Hades runs the underworld with his wife Persephone, who would rather not be there but she is because of him. So Orpheus takes it upon himself to try and find a way to rescue her and get her back. So it's all about that kind of thing. And it's really good. There's some good music in there and stuff like that. And the story is really well written. The costumes are beautiful. The set is relatively simple, but the lighting and use of different kind of bits of furniture and stuff kind of changes it to great effect and whatnot. So it's a great show and I really enjoyed it and I can highly recommend it. But what was particularly interesting for me was the fact that it had audio description and I was there to assess it before it was put out to everyone else at the proper audio described performance later on. They have had AD performances in the past as well but obviously it needs to be changed every so often the AD script because shows evolve a little bit as they go along so back in May I had attended an online audio description workshop with Roz Chalmers my second one I've done with her this year and I was paid for my time obviously 
And I was invited there to basically give my perspective as a user of audio description to say, you know, why it's important to me, what works, what doesn't, that kind of thing. And so we were talking to the two ladies who would be delivering that audio description because they were new to doing it. So they were really interested to hear my perspective. And Roz trained them very well too. You know, she gives them lots of great advice. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's very experienced. And they were so happy with my contribution there that they invited me to go along to their assessment for Hades Town to give my feedback on it so that Roz could pass that on as part of her general assessment as well. So that was very kind of them. I was invited along to the show and again, got paid for my time to give feedback and stuff, which was very kind. They were lovely ladies. Ladies, so I'm not going to embarrass them by name, but they know who they are if they happen to see this. Hi, it was lovely to meet you. But yeah, they did really, really well. Ros trained them brilliantly. I had a few minor notes afterwards, but nothing major. I mean, in fact, they did very well considering there were understudies involved in that particular performance for some of the main parts. So they had to adjust to that very last minute and they did very, very well. So yeah, I was very pleased about that. Very grateful to go along. And it was very interesting to kind of talk to them about what it was like for them to learn how to deliver audio description because you don't often get to hear it from that side, that perspective. You know, when you're an AD user like me, you just get to hear the AD without really knowing all the work that's gone into it first. I'm kind of aware of it, but it's nice to hear it firsthand. So yeah, it was very nice of them to invite me along and who knows, I might be able to do one or two more things like that as time goes on. I'm on Rosie's radar and on one or two other people's radar now as a result of this. So it's a nice little extra sideline just to earn a tiny bit of extra money here and there. It all helps. And if I can help to encourage the use of AD in theatres and to help people do it to the best effect for myself and my visually impaired peers, then that can only be a good thing. So yeah, thank you to Ros and the two ladies in question for inviting me along to do that. I'm glad I could help. And then going back to Emily and the two of us also went for a nice meal together in Richmond for another review she was doing. And this was at a place called Cinnamon Bazaar, which is just down the road from Richmond Station. Really, really easy to get to on the high street, which is good. And this is owned by Vivek Singh, who also owns Cinnamon Kitchen in the City of London, which is where Emily and I went to earlier in the year to have a go at their House of Holy celebration where you chuck paint powder over each other, which was fun. And this was also a little bit messy, this experience, but for a very different reason, because they were launching their UK chart challenge, CA. H-A-A-T. And this is where you have to eat as many panny puris as you can. And then whoever kind of has eaten the most who's over the top of the leaderboard by the time the contest closes, you know, the start of September, then gets some you know free meals and stuff in the restaurants and a certificate. So this was the launch of that. And it was good fun. So these panny puris are little kind of hollow deep fried balls that you kind of have a hole in and you basically chuck some filling in that's spiced with this kind of chart stuff. And then you dip it in some water to soften it and then pop it in your mouth. And you haven't got to wait to swallow it before you pick up the next one. You can just keep kind of cramming them in as much as you want to. As long as it's in your mouth, it counts. So it's good fun. And the filling we had was quite tasty as well. Not too spicy, not too hot. Just had a nice enough kick to it to make it interesting. And I got a score of 28, which I was quite impressed at for being a first timer. I think they were quite pleased as well that I got so involved with it. Because I just got into a good rhythm, which helps you just get into the system of doing it over the two minutes. Because it soon goes the time. So I got 28, which sounds like a lot but the leader had 40 and then there were several people in the 30s so I wasn't going to be anywhere near them obviously and even though I was on the leaderboard by the time we left that day there'll be plenty of people who kind of knocked me off there so I'm probably long gone off that list but just to know my name was there for at least a day was quite nice so um, yeah something different something different to do and then after the contest we had a proper meal as well of course which was a big sharing feast for each table so you could pick and choose from the various dishes you were presented with so I had some of the shepherd's pie which I particularly liked and the shrimp was nice too and there was a nice bit of cake for dessert with a bit of like custard-like stuff on it. And yeah, it was just all really nice, all really tasty, all very well presented and colourful as well. And it was just a great atmosphere and great people and everything. So yeah, it was a really enjoyable night. I enjoyed that and came out pleasantly full. And then I also went out for some nice walks by myself as well to make the most of the summer weather. And this was a continuation of stuff that I've been doing last month. So firstly, last month I walked along the south bank of the River Thames from Richmond to Teddington with my aunt. And this time I did the north bank by myself because you get different views on each side of the river. So it's always worth looking at both sides. So this time I got a closer view of Marble Hill House, for instance, and got to see some of the boats and things along the way, which was nice. And yeah, it was just some nice views along there. And then I got to see more of Teddington Lock as I crossed the footbridges there and the weir they've got. So yeah, it was a lovely little walk that. And then likewise, last month I walked along the north bank from Hammersmith to Battersea. So this time I did the south bank in the same direction. And this took me past the sailing schools where people learn to go like rowing and stuff like that. So that was interesting to see. And there's even a monument to an influential rowing coach called Steve Fairbairn along there, which is a mile from the start of the university boat race course. And I got a better view of the Craven Cottage Stadium used by Fulham FC on the other side of the river that I had to walk around last time. 
Um, so that was all very nice. And then further on, I uh, passed the Wandle Valley and there's a little nature reserve in there called the Spit, which I wouldn't have known about if it hadn't been pointed out on the map. But there's not a lot to see there, but it's kind of worth just wandering into for the view. So there's a bit of public heart in there and there's nice flowers and stuff and you get a nice view down towards the Thames and things. And then once you get back to the Thames from the Wandle Valley, you then see some more bridges like Wandsworth Bridge, which is painted in shades of blue as it was done in World War II to kind of camouflage it against air raids. And they just never changed it after that. Whereas Battersea Railway Bridge is a nice shade the green and then you get to Albert Bridge in Battersea which is uh, painted white and there's a big suspension bridge that stands out and looks very impressive so yeah there's lots of bridges kind of down that section of the river that are quite nice to look at and then I also went back to Richmond Park this month as well because last month I walked around kind of the outside of it just to get a feel for the size of the perimeter so this time I thought I'd look at some of the interior of it which is kind of more open there isn't quite so much shade from trees like there is around the outside but I had plenty of sun cream on it was fine gloriously sunny day it was when I went so yeah I got to see plenty of flowers there's lots of nice yellow flowers which I understand are ragwort and there's also the pen ponds I saw which is not a huge lake but still fairly sizable plenty of ducks on there and things and I had nice ice cream from a kiosk nearby as well. I mean, 99s are not cheap, but I wanted the refreshment. Haven't had one for a long time, so it was worth it. Nice and refreshing. Got a bottle of water there as well. So that kept me going nicely. And yeah, it was just a really nice walk. I kind of just enjoyed walking around there. So I'll probably go there one more time, perhaps two more times, just to have a look around a little bit more of it. It's going to get a bit samey if I do it too much, but I just want to kind of make the most of the summer weather to look around there because it's a long way to travel. So it's nice to try and make the most of it. And then I also want to kind of complete sections of the Thames from Richmond all the way around to Hammersmith. There's that whole section on both sides I've got to do as well. So that's another kind of project I want to try and do. So it's still quite a big section of river, but it would be nice to kind of join everything together like that on the uh, walking map that I've been filling in gradually over the last few years. So yeah, it's been a nice few walks in the sunshine. It's been nice to make the most of the weather. And then finally, a quick look at the entertainment stuff I've been enjoying. If you've been following my blog this month, you'll know that I've posted a big review of Live 8, which was the big set of concerts held to obviously try and make poverty history back in 2005. This was 20 years on from Live Aid that I've already written a review of earlier in the year. So it's been good to watch those DVDs again and catch up with lots of the other videos online as well that have been posted since then. So I've seen lots of the performances that I missed in the past, which has been quite good. So yeah, go and have a look at that if you want to. There's plenty there and there's a couple of playlists on my channel as well to go with that. Apart from that I've also watched the new series of The Outlaws on the BBC which is Stephen Merchant's comedy drama about a group of very different people who have been thrown together as part of their community service and they keep finding themselves forced into situations where they have to commit more crimes to try and fix things and in this case Rani reappears with a dead body which causes a lot of problems because it has connections to a gangster called the Dean who's looking for revenge against them anyway after they got him arrested at the end of the previous series and there's a corrupt police officer on his side as well, which is not helping matters. And there are various subplots too. Ben has a new girlfriend, but tries to help Rani, his ex, as well. Myrna's reunited with an old flame. John is still continuing how to get his business back from his father. Gabby is desperate to have a baby, while Greg is trying to fight her legal case against her dad. And their supervisor, Diane, is showing a new colleague the ropes as well. And a little cameo by Christopher Walken as Frank as well, but he doesn't have a big role this time, which is a shame, but at least he's in there in some form. But yeah, all these different story strands come together very nicely and there's plenty of uh, funny moments and visual gags in there as well along with plenty of tension and some emotion as well it's a good mixture they've made it all work together to good effect and the finale is good as well the final episode kind of wraps things up nicely and there's some callbacks to things that were set up in previous episodes and some emotional conclusions for some of the characters so at the moment it seems like it's the end for the time being but Stephen Merchant hasn't entirely ruled out bringing it back one day but at, at the moment um, it's at the end of it I'm not going to bother buying it on DVD it's not something I'd watch over and over again but it was definitely well worth watching once maybe in the future i'll rewatch it online at some point but i don't feel i need to own it particularly it's not at that level of interest but it is definitely worth a watch i think it's, it's been interesting and then i also watched douglas is cancelled which is a new one-off four-part drama series from itv each episode an hour long with adverts of course so more like 45 to 50 minutes each really and it reunites the writer Stephen Moffat with his Doctor Who friends Karen Gillan and Alex Kingston so I was quite intrigued to see you know what it would be like for them to get back together again but I did wait and see what the reviews were like before I tuned in and I'm glad I did because it turns out that the first two episodes aren't very good that's a general consensus but then the last two episodes are excellent so it's worth sticking with because otherwise I probably would have given up after just the first episode because the characters seem a bit silly unnatural maybe but come the end of the series it kind of more makes sense it kind of just gets better written as the series progresses it's basically about a newsreader called Douglas played by Hugh Bonneville who is very popular with the audience but he's then accused on Twitter of making a sexist joke they don't say 
the joke is, there's no proof of it, there's no video, but it's enough to kind of get the rumour mill spinning and people share it, including his colleague Madeline, played by Karen Gillan. She retweets it and the text she puts with it leaves it very ambiguous as to whether she supports him or not. And so that kind of just fuels rumours and things even more and other media journalists get very interested. So he kind of gets in more and more trouble about it and he has to try and find a way of defending himself against this joke that he can't remember telling. It's about him trying to prepare to, you know, face the press, face someone from Newsnight. He's going to ask him about it in public at the Hay Festival, you know. He's going to have a given interview there in front of a lot of people. And yeah, it's kind of all about his preparation to that and his kind of worries about how this could affect his career and how people are trying to help him, including Madeline, who wants to try and help him. And... Yeah, early on, the episodes don't seem that great. But then once you get to episode three, the tone completely changes. It's a much more serious episode. And that leads us into episode four, where things really come to a head and there's little twists along the way. And then a final twist at the end that really flips everything into context in a way that perhaps you hadn't expected. So yeah, all in all, it's actually quite interesting. It starts off a bit weak at first, but then becomes very compelling midway through. And then you want to see it to the end to see how everything gets resolved. It's quite interesting. So yeah, I'm glad I stuck with that. It was actually pretty good. And then apart from that, I've also been really enjoying the Olympics as well particularly things like diving swimming canoeing and rowing gymnastics and tennis and cycling and equestrian so far and athletics is just getting underway as well so yeah I'm writing a detailed review of the various highlights for me mainly team GB successes but also some other key people as well it's just been kind of really exciting and dramatic and everything as you want the Olympics to be there's a great atmosphere in all the venues because you've got the crowds back this time obviously they didn't in Tokyo really packing out the venues and cheering everyone on and yeah it's just been really fun the only weak part really has been the opening ceremony I think because I think they were just too ambitious with that it was great that they were ambitious and I admire them for it but it was just too spread out taking it all the way along the Seine to try and get as much of the city involved as possible so there wasn't the atmosphere you know the crowds were there but you couldn't really hear them because you didn't have the acoustic containment of a stadium and then you couldn't get close to some of the performances the cameras couldn't really get that close and not all the performances were that great anyway particularly some were good I mean I'm not a fan of Celine Dion particularly but I do admire the fact that she performed live for the first time after some of her health troubles recently so fair play to her and Lady Gaga was there as well she was okay nothing special really for me but yeah I just don't think it really works just partly because of the rain and partly because everything was so spread out and just from a TV perspective it didn't really work either I don't think because you couldn't see a lot of things very clearly but the hot air balloon with the cauldron attached was a nice touch I thought that was a lovely image kind of that floating above the city but um, yeah it was worth a go it was interesting but there have been better ceremonies I think but yeah the sporting action has been great so I'm really looking forward to watching the rest of the Olympics and then the Paralympics as well later on and uh, there will be a review of the Olympics and then a review of the Paralympics as well so keep an eye out for that on my blog in the weeks ahead and then I've also enjoyed Secrets of the London Underground as well which is always very good that's back for its fourth series with Sidney Holloway and Tim Dunn with their usual knowledge and enthusiasm taking us around different stations to show us different bits that the public never get to see and various other bits of the network as well that we don't normally get to hear about so that's been really good I'll do a proper review of that in a later post as well after the series is finished and then I've also been watching 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown of course on Channel 4 that's been back for a few new episodes lately they're not filming any new ones at the moment but it may well come back in the future but yeah it's not as good as it used to be in its heyday obviously you haven't got Sean Locke anymore and John Richardson isn't even in every episode either these days so I'm not a fan of every single guest that's on there but it's still been good it's still been funny it's still been nice to watch on a Friday night and that's it that's all I have to mention for July so I hope you enjoyed that and found bits and pieces of interest in that as per usual certainly been a fun month for me August is my birthday month, of course, though this year it's not going to be anywhere near as mad as it was last year when I did all sorts of things to mark my 40th. And I'm going to check out my video and my blog post from last year to find out all the different things I've got on there. I'm really proud of how that all came together. Really enjoyed all that. Happy memories. Um, but yeah, this year, much quieter. I am going to see a show that I've booked that I'm really looking forward to, and I'm hoping to meet a couple of friends. Other than that, though, I haven't got anything major planned. Um, that's fine. It's nice to have a kind of relaxing time. Um, probably get some treats in at home, obviously. Um, but yeah, it'd just be nice to have a relatively relaxing time. So it's not a big milestone to mark on this occasion, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, some things do come up that I don't expect um, every month, not just birthday-wise. Just obviously, I do some things that I'm not expecting when I film these videos. So we'll see what I come to mention next month. Obviously, there's things I'm planning to watch as well, not just the Olympics and Paralympics, but other things I've got in mind that I want to watch too. So... There will always be plenty to mention. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have a good month too, whatever you get up to. Hope the weather stays nice and that you're able to enjoy it over the summer. And, yeah, I'll leave it there. That's all I have to say for the moment. So, yeah, have a nice time, whatever you get up to. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. Thank you for watching and I will see you for another video very soon. Bye for now.